Hello and welcome to the Golden Octagon MMA channel. I'm Matt. Today is Friday, post weigh in. So we've got Change the Cheddar, baby. Change the Cheddar is my Friday post weigh in show where we try to turn $10 or less into $100 or more with my picks and my parlays. Today we've got UFC Austin, also known as UFC Fight Night, Calvin Cater versus Josh Emmett. And I'm going to give you guys my thoughts and my opinions on who I think is going to win each fight. And then at the end of the show today, I'm going to give you five parlays and hopefully we can win some chatter this week. So if you wouldn't mind, before we get started, please put a thumbs up on the video. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, come on now, help me out. It's not that hard. It's just one click. And down in the comments, let me know how I'm doing. If you're agreeing with me, if you're fading me this week, no matter what it is, I wish you luck. I hope you all win money this week. First fight of the night, Roman Delize taking on Kyle Dawkus, the little brother of heavyweight Chris Dawkus. Dawkus is the minus 250 favor taking on the plus 210 Roman Delize. And I got to say here, I don't know why. I'm going to ride it with the dog here. Something just tells me Roman Delize is going to make this a super boring ground out match and he's going to end up taking this home at the end of the night maybe it's me i am kind of biased after the kyle dawkins versus kevin holland fight kevin holland is one of my favorite fighters but we will get uh on to that later in the show but that being said i don't know why i'm going roman delize here Next fight, Phil Hall is taking on, I don't know why he's in the UFC still, but Duran win. And I'm just going to give you guys a heads up. You probably shouldn't bet on this fight. And you, unless you're a complete degenerate that you have to bet on every single fight, you should probably save your money and don't even waste it here because God knows what's going to happen. Phil Hawes has been known to get cracked over and over. His chin is busted. His gas tank isn't that good. On the other hand, Duran Wynn is five foot two and cannot make 185 pounds in the UFC. It is bananas to me how this guy <laughs> fights at 185 and it's five foot two. No wonder he can't win, and why can't he make weight? I don't understand it, but that's not my problem. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna let you guys know: do not waste your money here. Do not bet on this fight. If you do, you're gambling um, like degenerate, like me. Maybe look in the round props. Maybe to start a round two. That's the only thing that I can maybe give you guys. <laughs> Aside from that, nothing else here. Next fight: Eddie Wyland taking on Cody Stamen and Cody Stamen had to use the box of shame. He's a plus. I mean, he's a minus 580 favorite right now over the plus 440 Eddie Wineland. He should be the favorite, but I got to be honest. He did not look good on the scale. I'm not saying by any means Eddie Wineland is going to win. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I thought he retired already, but I guess not. Eddie Wineland's chin is also at this point, just been cracked multiple, multiple times. I don't recommend anyone putting a lot of money on this fight. Maybe Cody Stamen as a parlay piece, but how he looked on the scale, I'm even kind of scared to do that. I'm going to stay away, slight lean toward Cody Stamen. Next fight, Ricardo Ramos taking on Danny Chavez. I got to be honest, I'm not too familiar with Danny Chavez. I've seen Ricardo Ramos once before so that being said i have a slight lean toward him i really don't know how this fight is going to go but to be honest i don't have a whole lot of money on this fight either way maybe a, a round prop in a parlay or maybe just ramos straight up in the parlay up next maria Oliveira taking on gloria de paulo this is another one women's mma it's super tough glory de paulo a minus 250 favorite over the plus 210 maria Oliveira. They gave a crazy story about how she like stalked one of her favorite people at the ceremonial weigh-ins. Super awkward. I don't even know why they would put that out there. That being said, I'm going for the stalker. I don't know if she wins here. Not too much of a favorite either way in my uh, opinion. So that being said, I'm riding with the dog here. Let's go, Maria Oliveira. 
I hope she gets it done. She's the taller girl of the two, I believe. Hopefully, I'm not uh, confusing that with a different way in. But let's go, Maria Oliveira. Court McGee taking on Jeremiah Wells. A close one. Um, a few minutes ago, it was close. Now, Jeremiah Wells, a plus 100 taking on uh, Court McGee, a minus 120. Court McGee, as tough as an old leather boot made back in the 80s, he's still around. The dude is so tough, you can't finish him. Only been finished one time against Santiago Ponzinibbio. That being said, Jeremiah Wells definitely has the power to put out Court McGee. This is going to be a tough one for me personally because I don't know um, – I don't think that Jeremiah Wells finishes him, but I do think Jeremiah Wells gets the nod. What does concern me is maybe the gas tank later on because Court McGee doesn't go away. Court McGee is there the entire time. If he ends up winning this by decision, it's not going to surprise me, but I'm riding with Jeremiah Wells, the slight underdog at this point. And to be honest, the knockout prop is also live there. I may be sprinkling in just a little bit just to have a little fun. Up next, Jasmine Jazz Duvici is taking on Natalia Silva. Once again, riding with the dog here. I like Natalia Silva's confidence at the stare down. She was not backing down. She was like, get your fucking finger out of my face. I'm going Natalia Silva straight up. And if you want to be just a little bit risky this week, Natalia Silva via sub plus 650 she's got tons of arm bars on her record this is her first fight in the ufc let's see if she can get done with another arm bar this week let's go natalia silva up next one that was so tasty to me all week i'm glad i got in on it early adrian yanez taking on tony kelly and man tony kelly looked awful this morning on the scale Fast forward to, um, tonight at the ceremonial weigh-in. Adrian Yanez got in his face, was like, why didn't you make weight? Tony Kelly was like, hey, man, I tried, I tried. If Tony Kelly comes up with that high guard like he was at the stare down, I'm calling this Adrian Yanez TKO via rear broasters. I'm, I'm all over Adrian Yanez via TKO knockout here. I think Adrian Yanez gets it done for sure via knockout. Let's go a little Masvidal, Adrian Yanez. Adrian Yanez via knockout, a plus 130, by the way. I should have thrown that out there. <laughs> Next fight of the night, Cuban Missile Crisis, Julian Marquez taking on the RoboCop, Gregory Rodriguez. What a battle of the names in this fight. Julian Marquez said he felt disrespected coming in this week. And it kind of makes sense. He is a plus 155 underdog taking on the RoboCop at a minus 180 favorite. And I got to be honest, I'm riding with the dog again here. The guys, I don't know what it is. I'm a dog rider this week. We're just hopping on their backs and just riding them all the way to the finish line. Let's go dogs this week. I really like Julian Marquez here. He's a at a plus 155, I don't think you're going to get much better value than, th than this with Julian Marquez. The dude is a massive guy, crazy power, known for his submissions too. Gregory Rodriguez is a little bit older. He is tough though, so I don't know if Julian Marquez will get the finish, but I do think Julian Marquez will get the best of the exchanges being the younger guy. I do think he's more explosive. That being said... I'm wrong with Julian Marquez this week, if I haven't already said it and you don't already know. Next fight, Demir Ismagulov taking on Garum Kutataladze. Both very good prospects in the 155 division. Gurum only had one fight in the UFC so far, but he did win that. Demir, on the other hand, had four fights in the UFC, maybe five now, I'm not sure. Won all of them at this point. His only loss is before the UFC, so in the UFC, he is undefeated. He's got clean boxer. Guram, on the other hand, is a solid kickboxer, so this is going to be a boxing versus kickboxing fight, in my opinion, if you ask me. But, and just to throw it out there as well, they both have solid wrestling. Look at their last names. They both can wrestle. I believe this one goes over 1.5, and if you ask me, slight lean toward Isma Gulov. He's just shown more UFC caliber experience, in my opinion. New Monza, Joaquin Buckley taking on Albert Duradev. 
Joaquin Buckley all week shouting at the top of the roofs how he doesn't get enough credit, but nothing usual. I'm a Joaquin Buckley fan. I don't know if he gets it done here, though, if I'm going to be honest. Duritif, a great wrestler, and it was said uh, during the media this week that Durev used to take him down and hold him there. Joaquin Buckley acknowledged that. So I guess we'll see if it'll happen in the fight. Is Durev going to be able to take Buckley down and hold him down for a three-round decision, or is Buckley going to be able to land something crazy, something powerful, something explosive, and knock Albert's lights out? I guess we're going to have to find out to see. If you ask me, I'm picking the over 1.5 in this fight at a minus 155. Not the best odds, but I do believe this goes over 1.5. Slight lean toward Duradev. I am a Buckley fan, but we have seen him being taken down before. And if he can't get up, what's he going to do? Duradev by decision is the smart money in my opinion, but I'm going to be rooting for Buckley. Over 1.5 is the way to go, though. The Dirty Bird, Tim Means, taking on the Trailblazer, Kevin Holland. <laughs> I'm going to rock him with Kevin Holland here. Earlier in the week, I did think that Kevin Holland was going to finish Dirty Bird. And on the scale this morning, got to be honest, Dirty Bird's eyes did look a little bit sunken in, but I'm not going to look too much into it. Dirty Bird, a constant professional at this point. Kevin Holland, also no issues on the scale this morning. At this third down, they both got up right in each other's face. Slight high advantage in Kevin Holland's favor. I do think Kevin Holland gets it done here. I don't know if he wins by knockout. I'm going to be rooting for Kevin Holland via knockout. We all know that he has the power to do it. But Dirty Bird is so damn tough. I guess we'll see if it happens. I'm going Kevin Holland, main line, money line, maybe a little sprinkle on Kevin Holland via knockout. I guess we'll see what happens. Let's go Trailblazer. Cowboy Donald Cerrone taking on Joe Lozon. And this morning, Cowboy Cerrone did not look good on the scale. Joe Lozon showed up underweight. And then at the ceremonial way in tonight, Cowboy showed up looked rather good on the scale so he was well hydrated within the hours uh, between the official weigh-in and the ceremonial weigh-in joe lozon on the other hand didn't show up to the ceremonial weigh-in due to cramps so i guess we'll see if this fight actually happens tomorrow i hope so but i have no clue if i'm going to be honest i'm a huge cowboy fan i really hope cowboy wins here but if i'm going to be honest Joe Lozon, in his last fight, came out and put the beats on Jonathan J.S.P. Pierce. And if he does that here, Joe Lozon is going to get an old cowboy out of there. I hate to say it, but I believe it's going to happen. I have a slight lean toward Joe Lozon. But if I'm going to be honest, 100%, my money is on this going under 2.5 because I do not think this goes to decision at this point. Earlier in the week, I was like, ah, I think Cowboy's going to win by decision. At this point, I have no clue if this fight's even going to happen. I'm calling this fight under 2.5. That is the way to go, in my opinion. Slight lean toward Joe Lozon. <laughs> going to be rooting for Cowboy. I love how I pick all three of them. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> Main event of the night, Calvin Cater taking on Josh Emmett. Josh Emmett, a plus 195 underdog against Calvin Cater, minus 230 favorite. I believe the odds makers have it right here, if I'm going to be honest. Calvin Cater should get this done over the distance, his range, his distance, his clean boxing over the five rounds. Calvin Cater, by decision, is the way that this should play out. On the other hand, Josh Emmett has power. He's liable to put anyone's lights out. What scares me, though, when you talk about Josh Emmett's power is in Calvin Cater's Max Holloway fight. He's shown that he is durable as all hell, and in his return fight against Giga, showed that he made improvements, upgraded, and he's still willing to go out there and put on a damn show. I'm going Calvin Cater here, and over 2.5 is the way to go, if you ask me. I really don't see either one of them getting a, a finish here. Josh Emmett could land some very powerful stuff. I just really don't see him being able to put Calvin Cater's lights out. Calvin Cater is the way to go, if you ask me, and over 2.5. All right, time for the change to the cheddar. This is what you all came for. My five parlays this week. Are we going to turn $10 or less 
into a hundred dollars or more. And we got some good ones this week. I got two five legs, a six leg, an eight leg, and our Hail Mary this week, our 13 leg. But we only put 50 cents on that. So we'll see how that goes. Remember, guys, if you like what I'm doing over here, please put a thumbs up on the video. Whether you're betting with me or if you're fading me, I appreciate it. I wish you win money this week. And hopefully we all do. First parlay of the night, a five leg, $2.50 to win $231.38. Once again, five legs, a plus 9,155. It goes like this. Kevin Holland, money line straight up at a minus 295. Demir Ismagulov straight up at a minus 175. Julian Marquez straight up at a plus 155. Adrian Yanez by knockout, TKO, or DQ at a plus 130. And Natalia Silva by submission at a plus 650. I told y'all it was worth it this week. I believe it's going to happen. I truly do. Natalia Silva. And that closes out our first parlay, a $2.50 to win $231. Next parlay, another five leg. $2.50 to win $472.93. First leg, Adrian Yanez to win by knockout, TKO, or DQ at a plus 130. Julian Marquez to win and over 1.5 at a plus 250. Kevin Holland to win by knockout, TKO, or DQ at a plus 200. Joe Lozon to win in round one or two at a plus 350. If that even happens, Calvin Cater to win and over 2.5 at a minus 135. That is our five leg, $2.50 to win $472.93. Very hopeful this week, y'all. Very hopeful. Moving on along, our six leg, $2 plus 5,990, $2 to win $121.81. Straight up Natalia Silva uh, at a plus 200. Adrian Yanez by knockout. Julian Marek. Julian Marquez straight up, uh, Demir Ismagulov straight up at a minus 175, uh, Joaquin Buckley and Albert Derivative to go over 1.5, and Kevin Holland straight up money line at a minus 295. Those $2 will win you $121.81. If I'm going to be honest, the one that I'm most confident in this week is this six leg. Getting on into our big boys, our eight leg here, a dollar forty seven cents. I don't know why it's so specific, so let's just call it a dollar fifty to win two hundred and eighty dollars and one cent. Eight legs, a plus eighteen thousand nine hundred forty eight. Roman Delize straight up at a plus two ten. Adrian Yanez to win by knockout at a plus one thirty. Julian Marquez at a plus one forty five. The Demir Ismagulov versus Gurum Kutataladze fight to go over 1.5 at a minus 450. Albert Duradev to win in round three or decision at a plus 165. Kevin Holland straight up at a minus 295. The Donald Cerrone versus Joe Lozon fight to not go the distance. And Calvin Cater to win and over 2.5 once again. That dollar forty-seven or dollar fifty will win you two hundred eight dollars and one cent. Our last parlay this week, our hail mary, our fifty cent to win one thousand seven hundred and fifty-one dollars. Thirteen legs this week. One, you know how we do it here. I'm going to put it up on the screen because I have no clue what this number is. But we're going to start off like this: Roman Delize to win sh straight up at a minus or at a plus two ten. Phil Halls versus Deron Wynn. That fight to start round two. Hopefully that one doesn't bust it for us. Ricardo Ramos to win straight up. Maria Oliveira to win straight up. Jeremiah Wells to win straight up. Uh, Natalia Silva straight up. Adrian Yanez to win by knockout. Uh, Julian Marquez to win straight up. Demir Ismagula versus Guram to go over 1.5. Joaquin Buckley versus Duradev to go over 1.5. Kevin Holland straight up. Donald Cerrone versus Joe Lozon under 2.5. And the main event to go over 2.5. That will close out our 13 leg this week. Are we going to win $1,700 off of 50 cents? I guess we'll see. Going to keep our hopes up. 
Not too high, though, because we know how this game shits on our prayers. I'll probably make a few more parlays, but I'll see y'all here next week. I'll let y'all know if I win anything. But until next Friday, I'm Matt from the Golden Octagon. This was Change to Cheddar. Remember, put a thumbs up on the video. I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.